All right, folks, got a bonus episode for you. Uh, we're talking the world of mortgage and the education that the people of DFW, honestly, people of North America, need. Um, but really what happened is we just did a radio show and Patrick and I are sitting here in the studio talking and I'm like, okay, just turn on the audio. We should share this. So what you were saying was that there's this idea that home buyers right now have to choose their own adventure. And in your words, as concisely as you can, what does that even mean? So we have a, a dream, uh, a, a vision, intent that we want to purchase a home or we want to move into a different home than what we're in now. And we're going to make a decision one way or the other as to when we're going to do that or whether we're going to do it or not do it. And so in a lot of ways, I view that as what's the cost of waiting What's the cost of waiting to buy that next home versus if we did it right now? And the choose your own adventure comes in. We don't know what the market is going to do. Nobody knows. So whether that's home prices, whether that's interest rates, we have no idea. And what we can do is look at as interest rates or home prices correlate to each other in through history, what is that likely to do to the market? whether those rates go up, whether they go down or whether they stay the same, but what's the true cost of waiting to buy? If I didn't do it now and I'm waiting for one of these things to happen, what does that look like a year? Let, let's go through a few different scenarios to your point. What, what does that correlation look like? So let's just say that my approach right now is I want to wait for interest rates to come down. What might that look like a year or two or three from now? If, it, if we wait for interest rates to come down, my expectation would be that as soon as those rates start to come down, especially at a meaningful pace, that we will see home prices resume their activity that way we were, we were seeing in 2020 and 2021, and home prices will ratchet up higher and faster than we've been seeing. And that might put that home price out of an advantageous range compared to if we would have done something now with what might be a higher interest rate. All right. So I'm not afraid to use more ridiculous language. Let's, whether it's one or two years from now, let's say rates came down significantly. House prices are going to go bananas. They're going to go up real freaking fast. And home buyers are going to sit around going, I got the low rate I wanted, but I think I might actually be paying more for this house for the price and the payment than I would have if I had bought it at a seven and a half percent interest rate a year or two ago. And I believe <clears throat> with very little doubt that that's exactly what's going to happen to the majority of the home buying public right now. Now that's adventure number one. I want to wait for rates to come down and that's assuming rates did come down. So adventure number two, I want to wait for rates to come down, but rates actually go up. What do you think happens a year or two from now, potentially in the spectrum of possibility in that scenario? If rates were to go up, what's what's kind of the realistic but worst case version of that? If I waited for them to go down and I blew it, they went up. My expectation would be that rates would go down from here. But if I'm wrong, which you know, there's a high chance of that, my fear is that interest rates are going to go rapidly higher. And they might not go from being in the sevens to then eight. They could go from seven to 10. They could, there's nothing to say they couldn't go from seven to 12 or 15 like we they used have, to hear They about. have before, right? So everyone's tired of their parents or grandparents being like, what are you whining about? I bought 18 and a half in the late eighties, right? Okay, clearly seven and a half stinks compared to two and a half. We don't have to go into that on this show. We've talked about it for months and months and months and really two years now. The reality though is... Um, Seven and a half is still way better than 17 and a half. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm hearing it wrong, is you you feel way more confident that rates kind of sit or, or go down compared to going up significantly. But if they go up much, you think they could jump up. And I think I know why, but we'll, we maybe we'll talk about that later. So if the Fed thinks they need to just chop this thing down, you could see it panic type situation that all the talking heads want because it makes great media and then the self-fulfilling prophecy of fear-mongering will 
make them all happy and ruin our economy. You can see nine and a half, ten percent interest rates. And I'm just making that number up, but you could see not a tenth or quarter of a point bump, but whole point jumps fast. So if I waited for rates to go down and they went up, it's the opposite of choose your first adventure. And in my opinion, tell me if I'm wrong, you might at that point see prices kind of flatline or even dip more than they have. Now there's reasons I still think they wouldn't maybe tank inventory, but then I waited. Rates did not go down. They went up, but prices flatlined or maybe went down a little bit or, a, or, or, or some what. And I'm still paying more for that house than I am would have today. And the difference is I'm afraid the value is going to keep going down if I buy in that scenario. So adventure one, I'm waiting for rates to go down and they do, but I lose out because prices lap them. Prices go up so much faster than rates came down. That's the most likely waits for rates to go down and I'm right outcome, correct? Correct. And then I waited for rates to come down, but they went up based on good information, whatever we have. The most likely outcome there is they go up a lot. Prices flatline or dip a bit and I'm still paying more than I would have paid now in that scenario. That's right. Okay. So the third scenario then would be I just grin and bear it, kind of bite the bullet as some people say, I don't love all the terms of the deal right now, but I can manage it and I just buy right now. If that's the case, one or two or three years from now, what do you think is the most likely outcome? I've run this model many times and as for me, all 27 <laughs> times I've asked. And as this performs, you've you've locked in the most important aspect, which is the home price itself. Say it again, please. You have locked in by buying now you lock in the most important aspect of the home purchase, which is the purchase price, the value that you're taking on today. Time out. You're a mortgage lender. And what you're telling the good people of DFW is that the mortgage rate is not the most important aspect of buying a home? It is an aspect, but by no means the most important aspect. So we're agreeing, not shockingly, that when you buy a home, aside from finding the right structure, the right home itself, the price of the home is actually the thing we should be looking most at. Price cures all, I've heard. Say it again in the back. Okay, back to you. I'm interrupting, but I wanted people to hear that clearly because I think that's one of the biggest problems in our marketplace is that people are so obsessed with rate. They're paying more attention to that than purchase price. And I thought you said that well. Okay, so this middle scenario, I buy a house today. I got a 7% rate, 6.85, 7.25, whatever, somewhere around seven-ish maybe. And what does that look like a year or two from now most likely? As far as the... Yeah, what does that adventure look like played out a year? I, so I bought in whatever, current, fall current 23, times. and I got, let's just say 7% rate. What do you think my adventure looks like a year or two from now? One of two things has happened as we fast forward. Either rates are the same and you look at it and say, all right, it didn't really matter. Home prices are the same. More than likely what's going to happen is rates will have moved. They've either come down, which we already said, as those rates come down, what are the home prices going to do? Go right up. Go right up quickly. But it doesn't matter because you've secured that price by buying. I'm already a year or two market. in and I paid 2023 prices. You're already in. So rates come down, you move to that lower interest rate. I refinance. That's PatrickGlaros.com, right. and I get to move down from a seven to a six or seven, seven to, to a five. You know, regardless of what that shift is, in the context of what's it cost me to save the money by refinancing, we evaluate that through a, a mortgage review. And yeah, I'm not going to move down sense. from seven to six point nine, but if it starts to be significant enough, I'm going to make a move. Or those rates have gone up, and you look back and you say, you know what? I'm so glad I'm in the seven and a half percent interest rate. And, and it's still okay to say, I don't love my seven or seven and a half percent interest rate, but I like it a heck of a lot more than an eight and a half, right? Or so I'm 10. so glad I did that. So remember, scenario one was rates do come down, but prices skyrocket. Scenario two was I was wrong. Rates didn't come down. They went up. So my cost of buying skyrockets. Scenario two is I buy now knowing the, the price in terms and rate. And if rates go down, I get to go down with it. 
And if rates go up, I'm really happy with seven or seven and a half. So clearly we both have a strong opinion here. So I'm not going to ask the question. I'm going to state my out, my recommendation. You can state yours your way. I think the best thing to do, if you can afford it, if you can't afford it, obviously wait, is to buy now, control purchase price as best you can, and then be really heads up with your lender or lender partner or agent to keep an eye out for an opportunity to lower the cost of the home that you already get to live in and enjoy and enjoy the tax benefits of and the lifestyle benefits of and the appreciation home value increase of, which by the way, helps negate any rate issues and then deal with higher or lower rates later. If they're higher, you're glad you got what you got. If they're lower, you can take advantage of those at a minimal cost. My recommendation is if you and your family and your finances are ready to move and can afford it, you do that as quickly as is comfortably possible. How would you say what your summary is of those three adventures? It's the same sentiment. Having modeled this out in different directions and just plotting how things have happened in the past with these types of movement and rates and how does that impact home prices, the cost of waiting to buy is drastic. And by being able to control the price in a market where you at least have the opportunity to have some say so in the price is more advantageous than waiting for rates to come down. The rates are temporary. The home price is permanent. Yep. And I'm going to say this. We believe there are four to five key variables of home buying. And there's other episodes and videos on our YouTube channel and podcasts and stuff that you can find about those. But let me just give you a quick glimpse of this. If we wanted to paint more color on these adventures, as we're calling them in this choose your adventure, three primary scenarios. If rates go down and prices go up, seller leverage goes way up. So sellers are not fixing wood rot. They're not replacing locks. They're not cleaning carpets. They're not paying for pool inspections. They're not doing title. any of that stuff, right? So not only did your home price, purchase price go up, your cost of moving went up, your cost of settling in went up, um, and your cost of all the professional services goes up too. In the other adventure where rates go up, and prices go down, you actually get a more negotiable seller, but that rate kicks you in the teeth. And potentially um, in our market, because of lack of inventory, you still might not get a big price decrease. Now that sounds unfair because in the lower rate scenario, prices go way, way up. So how come in a higher rate scenario, prices haven't gone way down? Well, guess what we've seen? We've watched it for two years in our market. We've gone from the twos to the sevens and prices have not come down. There were moments in pockets where prices dipped a tiny bit for like 60 days by like 1%. But for the most part, we're seeing slow, steady growth. That's a 5% in increase in mortgage rates. We have already tested that theory. The inventory is slow, so low that I don't think that's something to wait on. So to Patrick's way of thinking about this, the cost of waiting sounds really high. The cost of moving forward now is maybe not ideal, but it looks a lot like the very best option. The best of the three adventures for you to choose. Make sense? Makes total sense. All right, folks, if you're thinking about buying or selling right now, just reach out to us, 214-310-0008 for the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, or go to patrickglaros.com to get the mortgage conversation started, or call him at... 972-728-3420. Sweet. We'll do it again soon. Thank you.